Okay, here we are right now, and uh, as our, as where I left off, um, as I explained what the displacement, what the values over here, what they do, the wind direction. So um, the wind direction shows your um, the direction of your waves. Let me go back here, displacement, and the displacement seems to be fine. But there is one issue I, I would like to mention before um, going farther here. So for instance, if, if um, I would like to go even higher, in uh, patch size, maybe like 7,000. Once I go to 7,000 and, and re render, my scale is going to get um, higher in, in the displacement. So once I go back to my um, geometry here, uh, it actually says to the lowest value uh, over here. If I go lower, it doesn't get lower than that, it's just right here. But there is the trick. Let me show you what to do with that. Um, let me just bring it back over here real quick. and. Um, we're gonna disconnect this. We're gonna um, the the connection between the reader water to displacement. We're gonna uh, select the disconnection over here and press delete to get rid of that. We're gonna go back to YouTube of this. Under YouTube, uh, select the blend color. You select the blend color. It's actually a new trick. It's a kind of um, best way to do it right now. There might be other ways, but uh, I I prefer to use the blend color right now. So I'm I'm gonna go over here. Um, select my blend color, make sure that both uh, the color 1 and color 2 is set on uh, black. I'm, I'm going to select that. I'm going to take my reader water, drop it on color 1. So right now the reader water is connected to drop one uh, to color 1. And I'm going to select my blend color, drop it on displacement. So it opens up the connection editor. So what we need to connect is the blender and connect it to the displacement. Right now. So just bring this to uh, value of 1. So if I render out, I will get the same result uh, as the previous what I had before. Nothing too different. As you see, I, I'm, I'm getting the same result here. Nothing too different. So I want to push my, uh, my wave scale down. So I'm going to go back here to Blender, change that to 0.5 and render out right here there right now it pushes the scales back to uh, um, the proper and uh, scale that it have to be so I think it looks pretty fine this way for me fortunately I, I do have a let me just uh, go back here uh, I already have a render version of this displacement in motion There it is. As you see, the the waves are floating on the surface. It looks it looks pretty good to me. But there is, but they're not actually uh, going to um, to the direction I'm looking for. How do I fix that? You can actually go over here, simply uh, increase your wind magnitude. But the but the time but actually once you increase your wind magnitude, it incre it actually scales up your waves as well. Let me show you. Let me just go for 30. There. It changes, it actually scales up your height. We don't want to change that. And we want to use a simple trick without changing and our waves just to push it. Because if, if uh, it actually increase our waves over here, then we're going to go to patch size and increase our patch size. We, once we increase our patch size, it gets, it gets um, higher in the scale and we have to come back here and we're gonna go lower over here for blender to you know it, it's a whole mess try to um, try to solve our uh, issue over here so without going all through all of that instead we just do something simple what are we gonna do we're gonna go back to 2d texture um, uh, create a projection we need a projection for our scene here which is a uh, simple way to do right now I think it's a nice trick to use we already have our reader so I'm gonna get rid of this here and I'm, I'm gonna select my projection I'm gonna select my uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna select my projection and drop the reader water on the image so it's perfect right now so here's our place uh, picture the projection so we need to connect our um, this connection over here between reader water and, and, and blend color blend color. I'm gonna remove that connection and instead 
I'm just gonna take my projection and drop it on color. But before you render out, select your place texture, come back here. You have your place texture over here in, in the scene. So let me just show you. This is where it's selected in your outliner and bring it up. There it is. There is our place texture. But it actually set in, in the wrong direction. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna push it back to point and nine and negative and ninety. So great. It looks it looks fine to me. So right now, uh, instead of like it's, uh, scaling it, I I'm not gonna do that. So it's uh, it's actually um, connected on, on on a since it's uh, already connected to the V-ray and, and the geometry, the V-ray geometry. So basically, we want to set the free to group bounding box. It knows it actually knows where to um, how to stretch it and how far to go for it. So it actually goes exactly as same as your plane. It goes gets right right on top of it. Before I go farther, to place our three texture, I'm gonna go back to frame one, and I'm gonna set a key in x axis for my uh, place texture. I'm gonna go back here, come back to the frame 48, the last frame. I'm gonna depend depends on how how fast my base is gonna go. I'm just gonna push it like four units and set key again. So right now, as you see, it moves along the timeline. So I'm gonna go back here. Show you how it exactly uh, I gotta render out the version of that. Uh, let me just there it is. File animation and there it is. There is our uh, water floating on the surface and also traveling on uh, the uh, direction I'm looking for very smoothly they're going so that's ex that's perfect that's exactly what I wanted don't worry I actually in, in this uh, part I shaded my water don't worry about that I'm, I'm going in the next video I'm gonna go over shading water so right now uh, I'm gonna show you another trick it's pretty simple to know um, the difference between a displacement and bomb map is actually the bomb map give you a, a softer surface and and Displacement give you sharper surface. I, I do have a few reference over here. So as you see in the Kano, our bays are look uh, our bays look very soft over here. They're not very sharp. But if, if you're looking for sharp waves, I, I would suggest maybe like for ocean, as you see like over here, how sharp they are and how fast they're traveling along the surface. That's what I would go probably if, if I want to get the really sharp surface with it. A displacement would be the best. So instead, I'm. Um, uh, connecting it to the displacement, I'm gonna go back here in my hard crochet. I'm gonna get rid of my displacement because I don't want to connect it to displacement anymore. So instead, I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna go and just take my blend color and drop it on my shader and select the bomb map. I'm gonna do it on the bomb map. But it looks crazy over here. Why is that? As you may, uh, as you remember uh, earlier, uh, I mentioned like once you select your geometry and you set your uh, displacement amount to 0 0.001, it has to be same as uh, as your bomb map. So you go to your bomb map uh, under the bomb map over here, the bomb multiplier. You're gonna set it as same value as displacement. So I'm gonna bring it down to 0 0.001. There. Now we have a tiny bit of waves, but they're not perfect. I'm gonna bring it down to uh, not. 0 0.001 because I'm gonna it's way too sharp there perfect now we have our waves on its surface so let me just render out there it is come on there it is Fantastic. Now we have our um, water on the surface here. That's perfect. But something to keep in mind, I'm, I'm going to go over here for displacement and explain a tiny bit of uh, the uh, displacement shift. So the displacement shift is actually, um, this is spe uh, specifies a constant which will be added to the displacement map values effecti uh, effectively 
uh, sorry, <laughs> effectively um, shifting the displaced surface up and down along the normals. This can be either positive or negative. So what if I, there is actually, uh, we have a checkpoint for uh, keep continui uh, continuity, uh, uh, enable water level. So this enable water level, it doesn't mean, um, it actually clamps your, your water. It go, if it goes higher value, like, um, then uh, the value you set over here for water level, like it, it goes, I don't, I don't know, if, if you add like one, uh, it goes to one unit, after one unit it clamps. So basically it, it clamps your uh, displacement, it doesn't show up. Uh, the precession, the texture resolution, it, the texture resolution is based on your texture resolution for V-ray water. So right now it's 250, so uh, it's 250, you wanna set this to 250 as well. But uh, since we don't use it, uh, the water level, we're just gonna keep it the way it is. Uh, let's just add that here, okay. And the tight bounds, the filter texture, so uh, for the tight bounds, this parameter will actually cause we are to compute uh, more uh, preci um, precise ba bounding volumes for the displaced uh, triangles, leading to a slightly uh, better rendering time. It's not very um, helpful, not crazy, it help you like uh, bring down this, uh, the render time uh, like five to 10 times. No, it just, I think it would be like one Barely just uh, change a tiny bit of uh, the runtime as I as I checked it before, and the filter blur it actually blurs your um, um, the surface a tiny bit, so it it, it doesn't blur it out like like in uh, compositing. It basically soften your your base here, and displacement bound is actually set on uh, automatic. So basically, it, the value it takes um, over here from Vitae water converted to grayscale. And as, as you may, as you see over here to black and white, it's uh, automatic. If you want to change it to explicit and, and, and you rather to uh, add different values to it, you can come over here and manually uh, change this value. So uh, I think uh, I, I went go over pretty much everything over here, which is fantastic. So next we're gonna go for shading and cut six in the next video. Thank you for watching.